Mid Journey, a premier generative AI tool for image creation. So yeah, AI made all of these. The interface looks something like this if you have the Discord version, or if you have the online alpha, something like this. And in this video, we'll be going over how to create simple prompts in the Discord shell. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I can light better than this. In this episode, we're going to be talking about mid-journey, as previously mentioned, and we're going to be talking about structuring your prompts and how to use the different parameters mid-journey has to offer to get the most out of basic prompting. This will not be super in-depth, as we're going to go into more of that stuff in future episodes, so let's dive into mid-journey. All right, so we're jumping into mid-journey now, and this is the Discord version that we're going to be using throughout the episodes. The alpha, I believe, is out for some users, but maybe not all, so we're going to use the Discord version to be safe. Let's start with some basic things. We already talked about kind of the parameters that that we're going to be using. So this is a comprehensive list of all mid-journey parameters. We are not going to use all of these or talk about all of these in this video, but I wanted to show you all of them so you can get a feel for how many there actually are and all the different ways that you can use them to style your prompts. We're going to be talking about these more as the video series progresses and how you can use them to change what your what mid-journey is understanding about your prompts and what it's going to do with them, but more on these in future videos. Let's just start with basics of how we would prompt in Discord, and that's going to start by typing imagine. And that's just the general thing you type to start making a basic prompt, any prompt really. So to start, let's just do something very simple. We're going to start by putting in some parameters. We're going to want to use version 6.0. That's the latest version. It's going to give us the best results. And we're going to do an aspect ratio of 16 by 9, and that's it to start. That's what we'll start with. And then we'll just do something basic like image of the beach and we'll see what we get from this all right so you can see here we're starting to get the preview uh, generally this shouldn't take that long you can already start to see kind of the images that we're getting forming here all right so you're going to get four results with every prompt you do with mid journey and as you can see there's a slight variance in the styles that we're getting so you can go ahead and click on these now and just take a look at them and see what you've got generally the next step in this process is to refine the images um, to get more of what you're looking for, but with basic prompting, you can basically just type a few words and get a pretty nice elaborate image from this AI tool. Now, if we want to create some variations, let's say we like really like the fourth image out of these out of this grid, we can do variations by clicking the V4, and that'll allow us to actually add more to the prompt to change it. Like we can say we want to add a image of the beach with a hut or something like that. And it'll create a variation, it'll create four more variations of the same image, but this time with our additional details. But it all maintain that similar style. And then if you're looking to upscale one of the images because you want to use it, you're happy with it, you just click the U, one, two, three, and four, and that has the effect of making it bigger so you can do more with it. But we'll look at that more in a second. All right, so here's our remixed image. So you can see it has the same aesthetics as the fourth image from the previous grid, but this time with the addition of the hut that we were talking about. You can see there's a couple different versions. The way it's placing it is a little bit different, but generally you can see and how simple it is to just add an entirely new thing into the image, maintaining the same style. And these are actually pretty nice images. They look pretty good. Let's try something a little bit different just so you can get a feel. That's a nice beach kind of scene. Let's try something from a city, perhaps. We're going to add the same parameters here. And you can see in the prompt, normally what I try to do with prompting is first you're going to put kind of the style that you're looking for or a specific camera type. And then we're, we're going to talk about that in more episodes. So I'm not doing it here. And then you'll put the subject that you want to see. And then after the subject, you'll put more things to refine it, like minimalism, muted tones, things like that. That's all stuff that we're going to get more into in later episodes. But for this one, I'm just doing pretty simply what I want to see in the image and then the different parameters that we have. All right, so that batch of images is now out. So as you can see, there's actually quite a bit of variance in the different styles. All of them are of cities. All of them have cars, metropolitan area, like we talked about in the prompt. But there's quite a bit of variance to each of these images. And that's where styling is going to come into play a lot. And you can see it is pretty easy to generate simple images 
pretty quickly, but to actually get more of what you're looking for from a creative side um, or for spe uh, specific needs that you might have, you're going to have to do a lot more to the prompts and making it more complex to get exactly what you want. Something interesting here, the black bar on this fourth image. <laughs> This will happen sometimes with Midjourney uh, because of its training on cinematic images. And you'll see in cinematic images, the aspect ratios will be different. They'll have black bars. And so sometimes that'll come up on images and we'll have to reroll to get that to go away. But that's an interesting side note there. Um, so yeah, these images are pretty cool. Uh, let's say that we really like this first image, of kind of the sports car. That's where we're going to use the upscale feature. And this is going to make it so that we just have that one and we can save it. And there's all these little different things that we could do to it. Varying the regions, having it choose where it's going to vary just by hitting strong or subtle and it'll just decide what to do. We can upscale it. We can upscale it creatively and let it have some more freedom to change what's in the image. And then we can do zoom in, zoom out, custom zooms, and changing the aspect ratio. So for demonstration here, let's go ahead and do a very strong and see what we get when we do that. And again, we get this pop-up to actually tell it we want it to vary. I'm gonna let it have free reign on this one. We'll see what we get. All right, so the variations are out. And as you can see, the style is maintained. Pretty much the same aesthetics of the image are all maintained, but it's gonna change kind of the way that the car looks, the angle, street view, everything is just a little bit different. So that's what that can do for you. Let's go ahead and upscale the first one again. And let's try the zoom out feature. We'll do a 1.5 zoom out and see what we get from doing that. All right, so as we can see in this batch of images, I don't really know why it makes four of them because it's generally going to be doing the same thing on all of these. I don't think really there's much difference between them, but you can see that it is zoomed out 1.5 times. You can continue to do zoom outs, keep making it bigger and keep zooming it out as you want to. But as you can see, it just adds a little bit to the background. And in other images, when you're doing actual creative work, you might just want to be able to see a little bit more of a person's face or of a scene. That's what you would use something like this for. All right, so that's the basics of mid-journey prompting. We got to talk about parameters. We got to see the Discord shell and how you can use that for actually doing the prompting. In the follow-up episodes to this, we're going to be talking about how you actually style them for your creative works, the things you're going to be using the art for, so you can get exactly what you're looking for. Thank you for watching this video. If you made it to the end and enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, and we'll see you in the next video.